I pretty much guarantee that I'm gonna go too far today, and that's fine. What is up, guys? Welcome back. Today is a really big day for me. <laughs> If you're new here, you might not know this, but if you're not new here, you know why this is a big day, and it's because I'm gonna be finally getting a chance to do a full face of Venetian Rose, the collection, the thought, the myth from M Cosmetics, and the reason that I have not been able to do this before is because we have all been waiting in hot anticipation for her to release a Venetian Rose colorway in her Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. Previous to this, we had Magic Hour, we had Faded Clementine, We'll go into all that, but this is the lady of the hour. This is the brand new Venetian Rose Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. And I have only swatched this on my hand. I haven't actually put it on my eyes yet, but so far it lives up to my expectations just in the way that I tend to talk up M Cosmetics for having such nuanced color stories. These shades look pretty straightforward, but when you get them on the skin, they have some really fantastic little hidden qualities about them. I also ordered the Heaven's Glow Venetian Rose Blush. Now, I say I ordered because I used to be on their PR list and then I moved and just something got lost somewhere in there and for whatever reason I've stopped receiving PR. I'm not mad about it. I just want to clarify. You know, it's always important to clarify whether I bought something or not. So I did buy these and um, I'm really excited to try this as well. Obviously you can see I have not touched that either. And so all I have on right now is a little bit of the Oric Glow Lust mixed with some Shantikai SPF Tinted Moisturizer. And so we're going to finish my makeup together using all of these things. I also have the Venetian Rose Lip, what is this, Infinite Lip Cloud? Is that what this is called? I love this stuff. And, uh, that's gonna be the vibe today. And then obviously we will talk about pricing, claims, and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead and jump in. Yeah, so excitement doesn't really begin. I am so, I'm so pumped because this is that <sighs> nuanced, mauvey, purpley, pinky, cool toned, neutral-ish, you know what I mean? Uh, color way that I feel like looks really good on me. <laughs> Being totally selfish, like this is just my ideal situation. Here we have the swatches of all of the shades and you can see what I'm talking about. So yes, you know, we've got this really lovely like duochrome or really, you know, straight down the middle of Venetian rose kind of shade. A brown, a another kind of like ballerina pink shift something. I don't know, we'll see it on, on my eyeballs. But this shade is actually, I know it's like probably the one that excites everybody the least, but it's the one that excites me the most because it looks kind of light brown. But you can see on the skin, it actually pulls a little bit lavender. And then this is this, I don't know, like silvery beige that also has a little bit of lavender under it. So it should not have been that hard. What is wrong with me? Okay. <laughs> Divine Skies, why are you itchy? Stop that. The Divine Skies eyeshadow palette formula is so wonderful. I have been saying since I first tried the Magic Hour palette, I said we need this in like several colorways, whatever, because it was only Magic Hour for a long time. This is Magic Hour and this is Venetian Rose. So Magic Hour is gonna be a lot more kind of true pink. And then Venetian Rose has that lovely purpley rosy color. So quit with the jibber jabbering khaki and let's just get this on my eyes. I'm gonna dip right into Phoenician, Phoenician Rose. No, it is not Phoenician, it is Venetian. And we're gonna go kinda all over with this. As you can see, her pigmentation is not messing around. And I do also love Faded Clementine, not just because it is a rare orange and pink color story, but also because it has even more pigmentation to it because it is very much meant to flatter deeper skin tones. So I'm kind of all over the place here, but that's what this one looks like. And it's, I have a whole video on it. It is wild and it is beautiful and it is not specifically for me. And that is absolutely by design and totally fine. So going back in here, I definitely think that the pigmentation on these though is a little bit more intense, just if I'm, you know, if memory serves, than the Magic Hour colorway. That was kind of my only complaint about the Magic Hour colorway. 
it's not that it's not good because it works perfectly for me. It was just that it was the only one that existed. And I was like, okay, yes, that's great that it works perfectly for me. But you know, it's, I'm not, I'm only one person kind of thing. I'm only one skin tone. And I'm so glad that, you know, obviously I'm not the only person who felt that way and she listened and didn't just, you know, put something out to satisfy people. It was like, she really, I feel like shot for the moon. Everything is just so, so, so well done. And this really has that like love letter to my heart kind of purpley undertone to it. Then um, I will take a little bit of this beautiful shade. That's probably, yeah, again, that's my favorite shade. It's called Always because it's that ideal crease shade for me. It's not very dark and it just adds, oh, hey, hi, hello. Hello. Hi. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay. That sounds great. Oh yeah, we picked the, the middle one. Mm-hmm. Sure. Perfect. I'll do that. All right, sure. All right, thanks. Bye. I have to go take a picture of the serial number on the front of our water heater because as you can probably tell by my appearance, our water heater died on Sunday and it's Tuesday, so. I'm going to put this right here in my crease and then I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, back to what really matters, makeup. As you can see, these pretty much blend themselves. Let's continue. I pretty much guarantee that I'm gonna go too far today and that's fine. I'm gonna actually go in with a flat brush and use that same light brown shade always, like all over my lid too here. Kind of play with these mattes a little bit. They are so pretty. You can always hide a world of sins with a beautiful texture of a foiled shadow, shimmer, even satin. But mattes, mattes tell the truth. And if the formula is weak, it will tell on you, especially when you use them by themselves. No primer, no nothing. And these are like velvet. They are so easy to blend. And they're very pigmented. Even that being the lighter brown, I still ended up with like a lot of really great richness and no skippiness, no nothing. Just really, really rich pigment, not even applied with my finger. I'm gonna take this brush. Those were both from Wayne Goss. I'm gonna take this brush from e.l.f. that I really, really like. It is their eyeshadow C brush. I like this because it's kind of it's really, really densely packed and it's kind of shaped like the end of my finger. <laughs> so I can take something like this shimmery shade, which is called Charm, I think, and just do the outside here. I wanted to see how they layered, you know? I can do any one of these as like a one and done, but I wanted to see how that one would work over the brown, you know? It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Add a little bit of dimension there. Something that I've been really enjoying doing lately is taking something that's more of a highlight shade. So I'm gonna go in with that really highlighty shade called Honeymoon. And I actually use it all the way from like here to like not, it's not just like the um, brow bone area, it's like, straight up where the light actually hits on my face. See, like right there. I don't really know why. I'm not sure it's like the most flattering thing in the world, but it's just accentuating what's already happening naturally. And then I'll use that light pink on my actual brow bone. And when I say pink, everything in this leans a little bit purple. Move mauve. Yeah. Very, very pretty. Take a little bit of that light pinky move mauve and add blown out thing down here. So I have shimmer where I want the light to accentuate. I have matte where I want it to absorb. And I still think that I could go in and just deepen ever so slightly, ever so slightly with that darkest brown kind of like, if I'm looking straight into the mirror, right there at the deepest part of my socket. See the difference? We're not even really like creating an illusion necessarily, like, oh, it doesn't make my eyes look bigger, but it just accentuates what's there. A lot of times when you get into playing with shadow and light, 
you find that you're sort of driving extremes farther and farther away from each other. That's all it really is. It's like, okay, well I accentuated a lot of light, so actually I'll lose the natural shadow, and so I have to accentuate the natural shadow for it to show up. That is so freaking pretty, so easy to use, holy moly, I love this. Let's do the blush, and then I will probably do like a zoom through of the rest of my makeup because it's all just the same stuff I always use. <laughs> the only hang up that I have had in the past with these particular blushes is just that they are all a little shimmery for my taste. So as you can see, that's quite shimmery. She just commits, you know, it's just, that's just the nature of the formula. And I don't actually really love the, um, the color drops that everybody really likes because I find that, you know, I can't really build them up to the saturation that I want without them getting just too wet on my face. So I do own that in Venetian Rose, but I'm not gonna be using that today. I'm looking a little bit like superhero-ish at the moment because of just like the socket effect on my eyes, but that's because I am putting all of these on first. This is not the typical order that I would do my makeup in. I just wanted to show the trueness of these colors before I went in with everything else. I've gotten complaints in the past that if I'm showcasing something like this that is like a, just a blush or an eyeshadow palette, that if I put on a bunch of bronzer first, which would be my normal routine, that it obscures the colors and you're not able to really see the true shade on my skin. And so I'm just going to mix the order up to try and make it a little more useful for you. But here's the thing, okay? And this is why I know that this color is just one of those colors that tends to flatter my skin is because look at my lips right now. Your lips are always a really great guide for your undertones or what colors flatter your skin. That doesn't mean that you have to follow that to the T every single time, but if you do wonder sometimes what direction to go in if something's just like not quite looking right, follow your lips. <laughs> because for me, you can see that my lips kind of, you know, you would say, oh, they're pink. But if you look closer, they actually have a lot of blue in them. And you can see that when I put a color like this on my cheeks and on my eyes, it really starts to look at home, native to this color on my lips. Whereas if I were to put an orange on or like something peachy or something that's like too red sometimes, you'll start to see that my lips will look either like way too cool or way too pink or just way too like uh, washed out. And that is a signal to me that not necessarily like, oh, this makeup's wrong, but if I'm gonna layer something else on there, I can bring it back home by heading back towards the North Star of the undertone of my lips, if that makes sense. So that is what I use to kind of govern those decisions because, you know, it's the most natural source of, for me, pink, but for a lot of people, just the color that their skin would turn in the sun or if they were to, you know, take a jog in the fjords. So um, all that said, I don't really have to worry about that with this because I am already working right within my face's comfort zone. <laughs> I could just go absolutely nuts with these colors and I fully intend to. Okay, that's a whole bunch of blush. Now I'm going to just go into speed mode and uh, do my bronzer and my everything. And we'll come back and we'll just put the lips on and you guys know the rest. was, you know, all my normal brow, eyeliner, mascara things. I also used a little bit of the Wayne Goss, the Weightless Veil vale Blush Palette in Coral Rose. This is one of my favorite true cool pinks versus a purpley pink, I guess you would say. It's just a light pink. And I feel like it balanced it out a little bit because it isn't as shimmery. I just wanted something that was gonna mattify it a little bit and 
add a little bit of dimension, just a tiny bit of depth. And I used a small-ish brush, the uh, the blush brush, the new one, newer one from Thrive to apply that because I didn't want to obscure the local color being Venetian Rose, but I'm just kind of using it to blend into the concealed areas. I then, you know, kind of went in completely out of my typical order with my complexion products and things like that. So everything will be listed below that I use and then I'm waiting for this mascara to dry so that I can like like that off of there. Oh, and something else that I noticed recently in the Salt New York video actually was how much I really, really like this highlighter. I told you guys that I was going to move back towards highlighter at some point and I have been off highlighter for a while, but man, I mixed that highlighter in. What brush did I, where did I put it? There it is. Um, I mixed the highlighter in with a blush and I just noticed how luminous my face looked in that video. And it's mainly because I took this beige highlighter right here and I touched it kind of in that area where my concealer blends in with my blush. And this is not a super duper icy, you know, <laughs> highlighter texture. It just adds a little bit. It's very similar to if you already have like the um, Daniel Sandler Moon Glow, you know, you don't need to buy both kind of thing but I love it because it just adds a texture to the skin that looks, it looks like a Photoshop effect that you would see in a magazine or something. And it doesn't actually change the color of my skin. It just changes the texture and it's the beige shade. So, I mean, she's got tons of shades. So there should be a shade for anybody to be able to find one that like matches their skin, <laughs> not, you know, has a color payoff. Like I don't want this to have a color payoff. I want it to just be sort of the color of my skin and add texture. And that is what it does. And I mean, is that not like, I, that just adds something. I barely touched into it. And this is like a Dear Dahlia brush that I got for free when I made like some big order from them. So I actually really, really like just using a really fluffy synthetic brush or medium fluffy synthetic brush to put that on. That's so easy. I got a real doozy right there. Oh, that hurts so, so much. My kid has the grabbiest hands and he just like reaches up and grabs my nose, which I usually don't care about. But like that thing has made my eyes water recently. All right. Now, typically I would put on my khaki lip liner, but I just want you guys to see this, you know, sans embellishment. You can see this has had plenty of use. This is, again, the Venetian Rose Infinite, nope, Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer. All of her stuff has, you know, a lot of really beautiful names and I can never remember them, so. <sighs> this lip color feels like coming home. Not only is it an amazing formula and State of Kate did, and I'm sure a lot of other people do too, but State of Kate did a video swatching all the shades, which is awesome. I don't even own all the shades of this. And uh, I highly recommend that if you're like, you know, just curious about the formula and everything and all the different colors, cause they're all really pretty. But also um, it's just a my lips but better kind of color. It's one of the only lip colors that I can wear at like full saturation and feel not too made up, I guess, just because it's so native to my skin tone. So I'm gonna move y'all out and we're just going to briefly discuss all this stuff before we jump into my final thoughts. And then in order to get that kind of thing off, grab a spoolie, the cleanest one you got, and it'll take off dried mascara. I also don't like to really accentuate my cupid's bow. I feel like it's sort of like my face is already really angular. And if you accentuate my Cupid's bow, it just like really over accentuates the angularity of everything. If so, let's talk pricing and everything else on this. Venetian Rose. This is a $40 palette and do not be deceived by the compactness of this compact. This is quite a lot of product and it's very luxurious feeling. It's a very like heavy container. Plus, I don't know, man, I think it's really cool to have these be the shape that they are. They travel really nicely, but also it's easy to find this in your collection. It's flat enough that it goes with everything else. It's not some kind of like weird shape that's gonna like, you know, everything's gonna like wobble on top of or something, but uh, it is like distinct enough that it's easy to find. And I mean, that is just an excellent use of space, if you ask me. Two times 1.5 is three times three is nine. You get nine grams of product total for $40. Please check my math. 
Oh man, this picture of Michelle Phan, she's, you know, wearing probably a very similar face of makeup to what I'm wearing right now, except very expertly applied. And she has, you know, brown eyes and it just looks phenomenal on her too. This is obviously gonna be great on everybody, but I always like when I find a palette that looks great on brown eyes. So $40, this is inspired by romance, elegance, and feminine tones. This palette has, in, has an enchanting range of rosy pinks and neutrals with matte to shimmery finishes, formulated with velvety pigments to mix, layer, and blend seamlessly for beautiful and lasting color payoff. This palette will be your new modern essential. And you know, this formula wears all day. It is one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas just because it, like I said about the mattes, the mattes blend so beautifully. They make you feel like an expert. I just, I really, really enjoy it. I've said before, there are a lot of makeup formulas where I completely um, feel like I overestimated my skills. You know, something just kind of makes me look like I have no idea what I'm doing. This formula like does more than half the work for you. It covers the distance um, and it's just, a, it's such a beautiful, formula in terms of like rich payoff, but you also get amazing blendability. Okay, and the Heaven's Blue Radiant Veil Blush, it, she has all these color stories. If you're unfamiliar with M Cosmetics, if you're unfamiliar with M Cosmetics, I've got a few videos on it, but like, it's just, it's all really, really good. I don't love every single formula in her collection. Like I said, some of the blushes don't really agree with me, but I love that she does these capsule color stories. So there is like the um, Magic Hour color story, which is that more, pink leaning coral-ish, like the rest of the colors lean a little bit coral, like the lip cloud and everything does. Um, and there are other colors that don't exist inside of these color stories, but then there's Faded Clementine, there's Venetian Rose, there are three. Faded Clementine is on here twice because they changed the packaging. So it's like, if you want the black packaging, you get the old one. If you want the new orange packaging, you get the new one, same price. Rich Vintage Rose Hues Mingle. I love that she calls it Vintage Rose. That's really, like, that's a really good word for the kind of little bit of muddiness that's underneath it. You know, you just kind of think of it as like an antiqued kind of color. A whisper of soft gold to create a luxurious powder that imparts radiance and luminosity for multi-dimensional and seamless color. Formulated with an innovative blend of golden, pink, and copper pearly pigments, this a delicate baked blush layers beautifully for a warm diffused glow. So that is the thing. Like when you have anything that has a little bit of shimmer to it or a lot of bit of shimmer to it, it's going to always aid in the blendability. Do I think that it is a standalone blush for every single person? Not necessarily because for me, it definitely isn't. I want to be able to control the shimmer versus the mattification on my face, but especially in this colorway, an incredibly good asset to have in my collection. Like it's a very, very unique tool. And then we will talk about that lip. Universally flattering balm luminizes your lips with a sheer touch of color. This is the Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer. Comes in a clear quartz faded clementine angel, uh, which looks to be a really beautiful pink. Mystic, which is like decidedly purple. Uh, Magic Hour is gonna lead a little bit more of like an opaque um, pinky to coral-ish. It looks pretty coral on me. And then we have Venetian Rose, which is this lovely dusty purple-ish leaning mauve color. It says it's a vintage rose again. So Universally flattering Venetian Rose with Vintage Rose Shade luminizes your lips with a sheer touch of color. Formulated with a nourishing blend of hyaluronic acid and vitamin E, this ultra comfortable balm melts on contact into a luxurious cushion texture with a glossy finish. Yeah, just to touch briefly on this formula, it is wild because, you know, it comes in this little crank up situation and you're like, oh, it's gonna be a lipstick. It's not a lipstick, really. I mean, only in its delivery system does it kind of remind you of a lipstick, but it is very much like a, a lip gloss balm that is just viscous enough to be contained inside of this package. Like you don't ever want to like crank this up because the stick can't sustain that. It's just, it's super, 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 super balmy. Someone compared it to the, uh, or you know, more compared to it, the, new Glossier uh, Ultra Lips. Very, very similar. This is a little more pigmented and I do find the shades to be more useful because it's M Cosmetics. I, 
that is always my call out for her and you know it, it, it threads straight through what we're doing right now too and that is that her colors are always just so dialed in so dialed in and I've definitely heard criticism in the past because I said something like you could just throw a dart at her website and anything will look good on anybody it'll either, either look good or it'll look great kind of thing and some people are like yeah well but you're a white girl you know and this stuff is kind of primarily like centered around looking good on someone like you and I do agree with that and I do think that you know obviously every brand could do better kind of thing but um she is definitely moving like with the faded clementine with fleshing out faded clementine before she went with venetian rose i do feel like it did give just a whole new group of people um an entry point to her brand so smart from her standpoint but also just really a lot more accessible and a lot more fun for a lot more people and um you know obviously purple doesn't look good on everybody but this has a lot of saturation to it, a lot when these eyeshadows, I put these eyeshadows on, like I do think that they will show up on most skin tones, whether they flatter you or not is, you know, completely personal. So let's move into my final thoughts here, shall we? So talking about, obviously, I mean, the lip, this is something that you guys probably, I was like a broken record on for a while because it's been out for a while. I think the first time I put it on, I was like, whoa, 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 what? Because it's just so rare that I find something that's this pigmented that I can wear it full saturation and not be like, ooh, oh, that's the only thing you see on my face. Here comes Kaki's lips kind of thing because it's just such a native shade on my face. I like it so much. And it's like one that like bails me out of trouble. If I'm ever having like a panic moment when I'm putting my makeup Makeup on and I'm like, no lip color looks good with this. I just lean on Venetian Rose because it just looks like it was kind of cut out for me, right? The blush, like I said, love this color. I really do. I think they did a great job with it. But as far as the formula is concerned, you should just be aware it's shimmery, you know, and it's a beautiful shimmer that does really aid in the spreadability on the face. And it is a lovely velvety texture and it's not highlightery. It's not so shimmery that it looks like a highlighter, but I need to use it with something else. Personally, for my blush tastes, I do wanna balance it out with something mattifying, but it is a nice thing to have in my collection. The, the formula is gorgeous, the color is gorgeous, the packaging is really heavy and lovely, and it just feels like a luxurious product. Now, this being the, you know, the star of the show for this video, Oh my gosh, you know, it's rare that you come into a review or that I come into a review with this high of expectations and it neither surprises me nor disappoints me. It is as if we all crowdsourced what we wanted or she crowdsourced what we wanted for this because it feels right in the bullseye of what we would have wanted with no bells and whistles either. You know, it's not like she said, okay, well, I'm gonna make this one shift slightly this shade and give you guys something new to play with. And you know, it's unexpected. This is exactly what I expected and it nails it, if that makes sense. You know, you are a big fan of this color collection from M Cosmetics. This is exactly what you're expecting. <laughs> it really is. Like it's just exactly the same undertones that you would expect. You see every single shade in the palette on my eyes right now. And it is that same gorgeous formula that we have come to expect from her. If you did find this helpful and or enjoyable to just watch me luxuriate in another contribution, another addition to the Venetian Rose color collection, do give the video a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.